Um, I'm Julie Connolly. I'm a periodontist. I practice in Manhattan. I have been practicing since 2005. Um, I'm in private practice. I'm also uh, teaching at the dental school at Columbia. All right, I'm Tom Connolly. I've been practicing perio since 1980, full time, and I practice with my daughter now for the past 11 years. You know, our philosophy of practice has, has always been to do surgery as minimally invasively as possible. So we've been, I incorporated microsurgical techniques over 20 years ago, and, and Julie did as, as soon as she came into the practice, although I did do a training program at Columbia for them. You know, whether it's microsurgery or flapless implant surgery, so that's really basically you know, was, was our approach. And so we were really looking for something in, in periodontal treatment, particularly surgical treatment, that would be less invasive for the patient, but of course would be a predictable modality. It's been one from somewhat of a skeptic to now being very much comfortable with including LANAP as a part of the treatment plan for my patients with periodontal disease and being very happy that I have another option for them in treating periodontal disease, as my dad mentioned, in a more minimally invasive fashion. You know, the first cases were the most advanced cases. You know, they were patients who would not respond to conventional sur surgery, whether it was osseous or whether it was any of the regenerative techniques that, that we now uh, employ. So my first patient, uh, which I'd like to share with you, is a mid-30s young woman who was a cardiac surgeon really bright, really sharp, and she had 10 millimeter pockets, buckle and palate of the upper right molars. And I said to her, I said, look, I said, we really have to think about extracting these teeth, developing the sites for implants, because there's nothing I can do, unless you'd be willing to try this. And this was my first patient, and she knew it, and I, she knew we were going out for the training program. She did some of her own research on it, and she said, absolutely. Well, now almost two, two years later, she has three millimeter pockets that we're maintaining. And she couldn't be happier, and I couldn't be happier with the experience that we've had. When that happened, and she still comes in for quarterly maintenance, and I probe, I am not probing gently. I am probing. I want to see if her pockets are coming back. And let's, for instance, say they did. I would just retreat her. I still wouldn't go towards the implant modality, you know, unless we had something really complicated, like almost beyond the apex, and even if she was willing to do endo, we really weren't getting the kinds of responses that we would want. But those are the kinds of cases that we, that, that we chose initially, because we wanted to say, look, we don't want to do this for our normal periodontal therapy patients yet, because we knew what we did worked well. I think regeneratively, we were looking for something more predictable. And for me, at least, I, you know, I found that to be the case with Lynette. I would say that there are now starting to be some dentists who will say, call me up and say, I think this could be a good laser case. I may or may not agree with them based on my findings, um, but I think it has helped us to, you know, show the general dentists and people who refer to us that there are other options um, other than a more invasive conventional periodontal surgery, and I think it allows them to perceive us as being on the cutting edge and. Um, looking to really try to find different ways to help our patients and manage our patients. And certainly one of the main reasons was to look for something predictable and less invasive. But we have a population of patients. You know, those patients have developed periodontal disease in the aesthetic zone, where with any conventional therapy, even if you're not apically positioning plaps but you're trying regeneration, you're going to get some recession and you're going to get black like, triangles between the teeth, the patient is generally unhappy. So for those patients, we traditionally had just done scaling and replaning where we wanted to retain the teeth. So we thought we had a population of patients that could be helped with LANAP by uh, treating them in the aesthetic zone. I think the next group would be medically compromised patients, particularly those on anticoagulant therapy, so that they don't have to go off their anticoagulant therapy and jeopardize their health. I mean, the other, the other population of patients would be those that just refuse periodontal surgery, either because of what they've read or what they've heard or that they've experienced uh, the treatment uh, in the past and they just don't want to go through it, uh, through it again. And also, as I said before, the predictability, we're looking for something regeneratively that would be predictable. 
we've always been technologically advanced, and our patients have been very pleased with us, our referring doctors have been pleased with us, so certainly this was sort of a natural progression for us. But I'll tell you, almost two years later, if it wasn't working, we would have returned the machine within two months, uh, six months, which was what the warranty period was.